Thank you for joining us for the virtual MindShift conference. MindShift is an organic, informal, and international network of Christian education leaders working to catalyze innovative change in our schools. We provide forums for like-minded leaders and friends who care about the mission of Christian education to converse, convene, and collaborate. The purpose of this conference is to provide sessions related to the recent book, MindShift, Catalyzing Change in Christian Education, as well as push beyond the book to invite discussion around pressing or controversial questions facing educators, students, and schools. After watching this keynote video, please make plans to join us later in the month for the corresponding panel discussion as noted on the MindShift conference schedule. As you're no doubt aware, whilst women make up 50% of the population, they don't hold 50% of the top leadership positions. Whether it's world leaders and heads of state, elected politicians, CEOs, board members, or leaders of educational institutions, even in 2020, women are still underrepresented at the leadership table. Does this actually matter? And why is it so? And importantly, what can we do about it? I'm Dr. Maria Vale, Head of Research and Innovation at Crest Education in Melbourne, Australia. And I'm really passionate about seeing all people, whether male, female, younger, older, and of every race, having the opportunity to fulfill their God-given leadership calling. However, the focus of this presentation is on women leaders in Christian education. And to that end, I want to explore these three questions in relation to the underrepresentation of female principals, administrators, and head teachers in Christian schools. Does it matter? Why is it so? And what can we do about it? First of all, a few statistics around women in school leadership. In the Australian context, while 80% of Australia's primary or elementary teachers are female, only 57% of the principals in these schools are female. And whilst 58% of secondary teachers are female, only 41% of secondary principals are female. In US public schools, women make up 54% of principals. And this sounds great on the surface. However, it's important to note that 69% of public schools are elementary schools. And this is the context where most women are likely to lead, uh, making up 67% of principals. On the other hand, men make up 67% of high school principals and 60% of middle school principals. And just by the way, the average gender pay gap in the US for principals is 25,000 US dollars. What about Christian schools? Some initial data from ACSI suggests that 56% of principal positions are held by males and 44% are held by females, although this is reverse for the next level down of leadership. Also, only 39% of board members are female. In Christian Schools Australia, member schools, most of which are combined elementary and secondary, currently, there are currently only 28% of principal positions held by women. And anecdotal evidence out of Canada suggests the figure there is around 30%. So, most Christian school principals are male. And this takes me to my first question. Does this actually matter? Well, no prizes for guessing my answer to that. Yes, it does. So let me give you two key reasons why. First of all, research into leadership effectiveness ac across a wide range of secular, corporate, religious and not-for-profit organisations shows that women make highly effective leaders. In fact, a number of studies suggest that they lead better than men. For example, in scaling research, Anderson and Adams draw on decades of research from into Fortune 500 companies and government agencies, and this is their conclu conclusion about female leadership, and I quote, we conclude that women are more effective because they tend to lead more creatively and less reactively. Women leaders tend to get better results than men. Women are more effective because they lead more relationally. Similarly, a 2012 study into leadership effectiveness, which um, surveyed 2,780 senior leaders 
uh, and conducted by the Harvard Business Review, concluded the following. In fact, at every level, more women were rated by their peers, their bosses, their direct reports and other associates as better overall leaders than their male counterparts. And the higher the level, the wider the gap grows. Specifically, women are rated higher in 12 of the 16 competencies that go into outstanding leadership. And two of the traits where women outscored men to the highest degree, taking initiative and driving for results, have long been thought of as particularly male strengths. So the lack of female leaders matters because women bring important, unique um, leadership skills to the table. The second reason why it matters is that the majority of Christian school employees are actually women. And like their male counterparts, women need to be released to fully utilize their God-given gifts in the way that God intended them to. So this takes me on to my second question. Why is it that in 2020, Christian school leadership positions are still dominated by men? Well, there are a complexity of issues here, and I'm just going to cover a few of the key ones, including those which are supported by research and evidence. But let me start by addressing the potential elephant in the room. One of the reasons why there may be an underrepresentation of women leading Christian schools, and in fact, in fact, very few women on Christian school boards, is because some Christians, whether overtly or covertly, believe that women cannot and or should not lead. Some Christians use the authority of the Bible to defend a position which excludes women from ministry and leadership. Other Christians use the authority and example of the Bible to support a more egalitarian view. This presentation is not the place to unpack this debate, and there are scholars and theologians who are far more qualified than me to do so. However, what I would like to say is that where views about women in leadership and ministry clash, there needs to be respectful, scholarly and informed discussion. Furthermore, I think it is important that Christian men and women, particularly those in leadership, equip themselves in this area and have an informed and full understanding of what scripture says, as well as a clear picture of the role of women, both in the Old and New Testaments and especially in the early church. And there are many resources and experts that can be drawn on here. So, as I mentioned, the challenges facing, uh, faced by women in attaining and advancing in school leadership positions are extremely complex. And of course, even once in leadership positions, many women continue to face challenges which their male colleagues do not. A 2013 report on staff in Australian schools, which was commissioned by the Australian Government and conducted by the Australian Council for Educational Research, identified four key points. First of all, women are less likely to identify leadership aspirations in the first place. In other words, female teachers are less likely than male teachers to aspire to becoming school leaders in the future. A second key reason why women are underrepresented is because women are less likely to have female mentors and role models. It's well established that aspiring leaders need role models with whom they can identify and who will encourage and champion them in their career path. However, given that women are underrepresented in school leadership positions, it's far more difficult for women to find suitable mentors. Thirdly, women are less likely to receive recognition and rewards that assist them with gaining promotion. And finally, women are less likely to have an uninterrupted career path which disadvantages them in gaining promotion. Australian data showed that 73% of males have uninterrupted careers in schools compared to only 46% of women. In addition, I think there are some specific areas that aspiring women leaders are often under-equipped in, and these include self-confidence, assertiveness, resilience, a confidence to um, assume their own leadership style rather than feeling that they have to lead like a man. And lastly, business, strategic and financial acumen. And sometimes this is referred to as the missing 33%. And it's not because women don't have these skills, but it's because very few women are clearly told how essential these skills are in, in reaching top positions. And similarly, very few women are given the opportunity to develop them. 
So this brings me to my third question. What can we actually do about it? And in this final part of my presentation, I want to share with you some of the things that we're doing through our association, Christian Schools Australia. Early this year, CSA launched FLAME, which stands for Female Leaders and Managers in Education. FLAME is a network uh, for women to support their journey into and through leadership um, at, as a school principal or other leadership positions, but and also at a board level. And it's not only about inspiring, encouraging and, in, and celebrating female leadership, but also about building capacity and confidence. So, so far under this banner, we've launched two key initiatives. And the first of these was a series of webinars, um, which are open to women and men, although they've predominantly been attended by women. Um, and these webinars have been an opportunity to hear the experiences and stories of some high profile women, um, as well as explore key topics such as a Chris Christian perspective on women in leadership. The other key initiative is, of course, which we have called Aspire, Navigating the Path of Female Leadership. And this course is designed to go beyond just highlighting the challenges, um, but to also practically equip women. Its focus is on what women can do for themselves in order to foster greater gender diversity in leadership and to bring their voices to the table. In developing this Aspire program, I really wanted to provide the participants with the opportunity to learn from the experiences of other women, especially experienced, those experienced in leadership, and be inspired by their stories, as well as to connect with like-minded women and begin to build their own networks. So this course, which we're running this year online, um, comprises of seven 90-minute sessions, and each session covers off on one of these key questions. What does the Bible say about women and leadership? How do you identify your strengths, put strategies in place to develop them and lead according to them? What are some of the practical ways that you can equip yourself and develop your leadership capacity? How do you manage the politics in the workplace in order to thrive in a male-dominated a leadership environment? Why should you have mentors and what might that look like? What are the core skills and attributes of successful leaders? And finally, how can you manage your career progression, your professional profile and the recruitment process? And for each of these sessions, we've engaged people and all but one of those are women who are experts in the various um, areas that we're covering to present material and also engage in discussion and to inspire our participants. And it's an opportunity for the participants to also see themselves, if you like, in leadership positions. The other course that CSA has launched this year for emerging leaders, and this is for both um, male and female leaders, um, is called FUSE. And this is also a very practical course. And this course covers areas such as governance and finance, risk and compliance, strategic planning, project planning, uh, human resources and marketing. And, and this, if you like, uh, provides women in particular um, clear opportunity to develop their skills in that missing 33%. We're currently looking at two further strategies to help um, promote and support women in their leadership journey. The first of these is around how we can mobilise those female leaders who are experienced and already have influence to more actively champion, um, be champions for other women. And secondly, how can we continue to help men, especially those in leadership, to understand the challenges faced by women and also encourage them to become champions of their female colleagues and to make space at the leadership table. At the end of the day, what we all want, men and women, is to take what God has placed in our hands and to use it to serve him and to serve others to the best of our ability. Thank you so much for watching this presentation and I look forward to being able to engage in further discussion with you in the upcoming live panel session.